Women, gadgets, guns, and John Cleese. James Bond has it all. The series of fictional spy novels by Ian Fleming has become a cultural icon over the years, with a martini drinking spy spanning many memorable films. And where there's films, there's games, and when there's games, there's me. So over the next, like, uh, honestly, I have no idea how long this will end up being, but I'll be covering a multitude of Bond games spanning the years, and what better place to start than Goldeneye on the N64. Developed by the once great Rareware, Goldeneye 007, as it's properly titled, stars Pierce Brosnan as James Bond. Goldeneye is highly praised amongst gamers these days as being a memorable early first person shooter which came complete with multiplayer deathmatch, which at the time was a pretty unique feature, as not many FPSs at the time had this. The game sticks fairly close to the plot of the film, but for the most part I tend not to even realise, a game like Goldeneye isn't really about the plot. It explains what's happening through flavour text before each mission, as well as listing your objectives, but a game like this you mainly just play for the shooty shooty pew pew action. Now, Goldeneye does play a lot more awkwardly than I remembered it being when I was younger. I didn't have much experience with first person shooters, and as such didn't really go into it with any expectations. But these days I've had my fair share of experiences with games such as Call of Duty, Battlefield, Tribes and even Titanfall. The list goes on and on. First person shooters have a certain feel these days. A quality FPS will have transferable skills such as going from Call of Duty to Titanfall. They feel similar enough right off the bat, which Goldeneye doesn't. This isn't exactly a negative though. While yes, it controls a bit strangely, it in no way cripples or lessens the game experience. It just means you'll need to take about 20 minutes or so to get into the groove of things and remember exactly how to play. It's pretty unique in terms of controls since, as far as I can tell, it's the only N64 game, at least that I know of, which allows one player to use two controllers simultaneously. A pretty unusual but unique design choice. I can't say much more on the subject though as I tend to just stick with the default control option. I think the two controller option is used by some speedrunners for various reasons but other than that I have no clue. Damn, that was uh, some tangent there. Where was I? Oh yeah, shooty shooty pew pew. Yep, there's a lot of that in this game. It's probably one of the only games where you can shoot a table and it'll blow up. I have to say, I'm impressed with the amount of levels you find in the game. They're all for the most part taken from the film and all have great atmosphere. Some feel like you should be running in guns blazing and others you feel like you should sneak and try not to get caught by the guards. And I think this is partly due to the sound design. Come on, you knew I was going to mention him eventually. The one and only Grant Kirkhope. But of course, he wasn't the only composer behind the game. In fact, to begin with, fellow Rareware composer Graham Norgate led the composing but then handed it over to Grant midway through so that he could focus on the soundtrack for Blast Corps. I think that's supposed to be pronounced core, but oh well. Goldeneye boasts a cinematic score incorporating the James Bond theme as well as accompanying tracks which match the overall tone of both the James Bond franchise and the levels themselves, helping to add to that awe-inspiring atmosphere that I mentioned. Now something I always remembered about Goldeneye was just how impressive the attention to detail was. Actual transparent glass which could shoot and shatter. I mean sh** <coughs> bed, what a time to live in that was. Forget modern shooters and their destruction physics, forget the frostbite engine man, this is the realest you could ever get. I should of course mention the multitude of weapons you encounter throughout the game. Now, an FPS having a vast array of guns in the N64 was nothing new. Hell, the original Turok was already out by the time this game rolled out, and that game had loads of weapons. Speaking of which, Turok freaked the hell out of me as a kid. I really don't know why, dinosaurs, so scary. The guns in Goldeneye included pistols, SMGs, that submachine guns for those not in the know, assault rifles, grenade launchers, rocket launchers, and even a laser gun which could shoot through doors. For N64, man, that was pretty damn impressive. Goldeneye, with its impressive atmosphere, its wide array of weapons, and exquisite amount of attention to detail, went down in history as one of the most revolutionising games in the first person shooter genre, as it brought realistic FPSs to the console market and even allowed people to play together in multiplayer so you could grab a bunch of friends and shoot them in the face. Now, Goldeneye wasn't the only James Bond game to be made for the N64. Three years after Goldeneye was released came The World Is Not Enough, developed by Eurocom and published by Electronic Arts. Now, Eurocom had some relatively okay games to their name by this point. Games such as Disney's action game featuring Hercules, A plus naming by the way, and Duke Nukem 64. 
both games which are in that gray area of, uh, it's okay. Not necessarily good, but not necessarily horrible either. And the world is not enough, sadly falls right into this gray area, while also leaning ever so slightly towards being bad. Upon booting the game up, I immediately noticed that the atmospheric gameplay found in GoldenEye is gone, which is kinda to be expected. After all, we've got a different team of developers on this one. The World Is Not Enough seems to have a heavier focus on following the film and attempts at being cinematic, what with the in-game cutscenes and even voice acting. Unsurprisingly, big time actors Pierce Brosnan and Judi Dench don't reprise their respective character roles. Instead, we're treated to mere imitations. Good afternoon, sir. Can I help you? The name's Bond. James Bond. While these are nice additions, compared to GoldenEye, things feel lacking. While textures may have more detail, they somehow look worse at the same time. Part of what gave GoldenEye its great look is due to Rare picking an aesthetic which worked. They took the limitations of the hardware and got the most out of it. It's got an almost caricature style instead of putting focus on voice acting and cutscenes. They just put more effort into creating lifelike and believable maps, accompanied with more intelligent AI and an unmatched atmosphere. That's not to discredit this game entirely, it does its best to follow the movie and does a better job in this regard than GoldenEye does. This game also has reload animations which is a nice touch. It just feels like such a strange specimen. It has strange voice acting, product placement and boring unimaginative level design. It's the quintessential film game. All it needed next was to be bombarded onto every platform at the time and it would check all the boxes of generic game. The world is not enough on PlayStation 1. Now you might be thinking, Scott, why are you mentioning this? Surely it's just the same game. Well, you poor naive fool, that's where you're wrong. This game's development process is something strange indeed, as the PS1 version was made by a completely different development team. The N64 version was developed by Eurocom, whereas the PS1 version was developed by Black Ops Entertainment. So let's take a look then, shall we? As soon as you start it up, you notice some immediate differences. For one, it bombards you with a bunch of logo animations for both EA Games and Black Ops Entertainment. Then proceeds onto a trailer for the game which includes movie footage, so for obvious reasons I think I'll refrain from showing that. Then we get to the title screen, and it's worlds apart from the N64 version. For one, it has much better music and just overall looks nicer, which I guess is to be expected. I mean, we're dealing with optical media now, bitch! arranged for you with a Swiss banker named Le Chaise. Le Chaise was paid three million pounds for a stolen report, a report that one of our double O agents was tracking just before he got killed. Would you just listen to the sound quality on those voices? Interestingly enough, the character Q is retired in The World Is Not Enough and is replaced by a character called R, and in this game he is voiced by none other than John Cleese himself. To help you defeat the metal detectors, I'm providing you with a very low frequency disruptor. When activated, all metals within a five foot radius become undetectable. Colour me impressed. I get the feeling we're in for a pleasant surprise, especially considering we've just come off the N64 version. You begin the mission with a nice video sequence taken from the blockbuster film itself, which of course I can't show. Ah! Ah! Ooh. Uh. Who is that? Who the f*** is that? Is that meant to be? Um, wow. Okay, no. No? Moving on. As we can see, a fairly familiar scene, not too different from what we saw back in the old cartridge, but different enough that it's noticeable. Although this time the woman behind the desk looks a tad nicer and has a clear voice. So what with this being on the almighty PlayStation, they were able to fit in more due to the bigger file capacity of discs at the time. So we're treated to better voices, more animations and better levels, as well as even more blatant product placement. Not much to say other than that. It's the N64 version only a bit better looking with slightly different levels. It makes me think this is the version they were focusing on the most, and it makes sense that they'd hire another team to make the N64 version of the game. Porting a PS1 game down to the N64 is like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Props to Black Ops Entertainment though, they managed to beat Eurocom making a better Bond game, at least to a certain extent. Speaking of which, I wonder what else they've made. <laughs>